Chapter 5 That Mary Kay Enthusiasm For some reason, singing seems to unite people. Remember when you sang those rah, rah, rah for our team songs in high school and in college? That group spirit we all experience is known as a spirit de corpse. When I worked for Stanley Home Products, the company had a number of songs that were always sung before and during our sales meetings, and it really helped to build a spirit de corpse. After leaving Stanley, I joined World Gift, a company which lacked that spirit. In fact, when I first joined the company, everyone seemed a bit cold. In an attempt to break the ice, I introduced a song contest, and the people came up with dozens of world gift songs. I watched those songs change the temperament of the entire sales force. So when we started Mary Kay Cosmetics, I decided that we had to have a Mary Kay song contest. We would select what we thought were the best songs, sing them at seminar and award prizes for those that generated the most enthusiasm. Now, the secret of a well-received song is to write your own words to a popular tune. And the song most accepted within our organization evolved when someone wrote, I've got that Mary Kay enthusiasm to, much, to a much-loved hymn. We sang it at every significant gathering of Mary Kay consultants with no irreverence intended. That Mary Kay enthusiasm became something that was a theme song. Traditionally, our sales meetings are held on Mondays, and enthusiasm plays an important role in these gatherings. To many people, Monday signals the end of a carefree weekend and the beginning of the work week. But if the last week was not good for you, it was good for someone else. So we often tell our consultants, if you had a bad week, you need the unit meeting. If you had a good week, the unit meeting needs you. When a consultant leaves the inspiration, motivation, and enthusiasm of a Monday unit meeting, she has an entire week to let all the excitement work for her. The whole week starts off in high gear. I believe that just as Monday meetings generate enthusiasm, a parent can generate enthusiasm in his or her family. For example, if a mother starts the day in a grumpy mood, the chances are that the whole family will leave the house with the same attitude. Even though she might not feel like it, every mother should make the effort to smile and say cheery, Good morning, how are you? Before long, even if she didn't feel cheerful to begin with, she'll feel better too. Enthusiasm is contagious, even for yourself. I truly believe that if you act enthusiastic, you will become enthusiastic, not just for a day, but for a lifetime. One of the best examples of making yourself enthusiastic occurred several years ago when we asked a prominent person to address a large group of Mary Kay directors and consultants. His flight was delayed, so it was necessary to keep improvising the program until he arrived. Finally, I was given the signal that he had just rushed in and was waiting backstage. Because I was the eminence, I had a page of typewritten accolades for him, and I enthusiastically began giving his introduction. While I was doing this, I could see him backstage beating his chest and jumping up and down for all the world. He looked just like a gorilla, I thought. My goodness, here I am saying all these wonderful things about this man, and he has just flipped. I had never seen anyone act so strangely. When I finished the introduction, he rushed on stage and gave a fantastic speech. It was truly motivating. Later, while sitting next to him at lunch, I said, you almost scared me to death. What in the world were you doing back there, jumping up and down, beating on your chest like that? Well, Mary Kay, he said, my job is motivation, but some days I just don't feel like it. And this was one of those days. 
I've had an incredibly hectic time with my flight being delayed this morning, but I knew that you were expecting me to be an enthusiastic, vibrant, and exciting speaker. I just couldn't rain on your parade, especially when I saw all those excited people in the audience. So I had to turn myself on. And I found that if I just drum up my blood, some exercise and chest beating, I feel much better. He began and became enthusiastic by using an external technique. But it's interesting to note that the word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word meaning God within. And some people do seem to pull this characteristic from somewhere within themselves. You could even call it a natural talent. I'm certain that my own God-given enthusiasm was my number one asset when I first began my sales career. When I first learned what the gift of enthusiasm could accomplish, I was a very young homemaker. A life in sales had never entered my mind. A saleswoman named Ida Blake came to my door selling the Child Psychology Bookshelf, a series of instructional stories for children. Each story contained a real-life problem, a solution, and an underlying moral for the child to use in similar situations. As a young mother trying to teach her children the difference between right and wrong, I thought that those were the best books I had ever seen. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford them. Sensing my interest, Ida let me keep the books over the weekend. I read every page, and when she came back by to pick them up, I was heartbroken that they could not be available to my children. I told her that I was going to save my money and one day a set would belong to my family. When she saw how excited I was, she said, I'll tell you what, Mary Kay, if you sell 10 sets of books for me, I'll give you a set for yourself. Well, that was just wonderful. I started calling my friends and parents and students at the Tabernacle Baptist Church Sunday School. I didn't have books to show them. All I had was my enthusiasm. Because of the way I told people these were the best books I'd ever seen, I sold 10 sets in just a day and a half. I was so excited that they got excited too. When Ida came back, she couldn't believe it. I had customers lined up so that all she had to do was go to their homes and take the orders. Later she asked, these books are difficult to sell. How did you do it? I didn't know what I had done, but Ida gave me my set of books and that was all that I wanted. Ida had other ideas. She said, I want you to work for me. Do you have a car? I answered, yes, we do, but I don't know how to drive. We did have a ramshackle old car that my husband drove every morning to his job at the service station and every night to his musical engagements. But Ida told me to be sure he left the car for me the next day. She was going to teach me how to sell books. She drove us out to the suburb and we knocked on doors all day long. By the end of the day, I was exhausted. I had never been so tired in my life. We didn't make a single sale. In fact, not one person was even remotely interested. I had sold 10 sets in a day and a half, and I couldn't understand why she was having so much trouble. I hadn't realized the power of enthusiasm. At 5 o'clock that evening, Ida got into the passenger side of the car and announced, You're driving home. But I don't know how to drive. That didn't matter to Ida. She had decided that if I was going to be a saleswoman, I had to know how to drive. You're going to learn right now, she said. She gave me one quick lesson and off we went, right into the Houston rush hour with its bumper to bumper traffic. I practically stripped the gears, but we did get home. The next day, I guess, I let my enthusiasm for my new skill as a driver get the best of me. I drove down to my mother's restaurant, very proud of myself, and knocked down two of three posts holding the porch above the sidewalk. The post fell right on top of the car and just about finished it. Nevertheless, I was learning how to drive, and thanks to Ida Blake, I had my first sales job. During the next nine months, I sold $25,000 worth of books. 
And at a 30 to 40% commission, I was making good money. But I was still to learn an important lesson about customer relations. When I saw my friends, they were often angry with me because of their purchases. It wasn't a flaw in the product. They all agreed that the books were very good, but they weren't being used. My customers seemed to blame me because of my enthusiasm had led them to buy books they did not fully utilize. Well, what good are books that aren't read? Their laziness was certainly not my fault. Still, I learned that customer must be taught how to successfully use the product and it was a principle I was to employ later when starting Mary Kay Cosmetics. My next job brought me additional sales experience. My husband had lost his job and the serv- at the service station, so as a team, we went to work selling cookware. Our specialty items were high-quality alloy pressured cookers and double frying pans. Sales were initiated by actual cooking demonstrations, and that's where I came in. I would purchase the food, prepare it during the day, and on the evening of the demonstration, we would bring everything into the prospect's home and put on a dinner party. The menu was always the same. Green beans, ham, sweet potatoes, a cake. Preparing it was supposed to look like child's play, but I had spent a great deal of time purchasing the finest cut of ham, selecting the most tender green beans and sweet potatoes, and carefully preparing them and pre-mixing the cake batter. My husband would give the sales presentation to several couples in the living room, and I would be back in the kitchen cooking the meal with the pressure cooker and the double frying pan. In reality, it was I who made the sales because the wives would invariably come out into the kitchen and ask me questions like, is it really as easy as it looks? And because the cookware truly was wonderful, I would answer yes. Each dinner was fabulous, but it was food we couldn't afford to buy for ourselves. If there was any food left over after the demonstration, it came to our dinner. If our prospective customers ate at all, we just didn't eat dinner that night. Eventually, we were forced to quit. It was during the Depression, and most people simply couldn't afford new cookware. Besides, selling it took what I considered a hard sell, and I was never very good at that. At Mary Kay Cosmetics, it was discouraged aggressive selling. We prefer to teach skincare and simply express our enthusiasm for our product. We look for consultants who share our educational philosophy, not those who want to use a hard sell. As a result, our sales force includes hundreds of former teachers and even nurses. When they discover that they can earn as much money or even more than they did in their former positions, Being a Mary Kay beauty consultant becomes an exciting and rewarding career. I think most customers appreciate the low-key presentation style we sometimes call polite persuasion. We present our skincare line in an enthusiastic, knowledgeable manner, and most of us feel it simply sells itself. Frequently, we receive letters from customers and hostesses complimenting our consultants for their polite and professional presentation. This kind of selling also ensures customer loyalty and enthusiasm for our products. Because we are aggressive, customers trust us in a way they wouldn't trust, trust a company that used pressure techniques. It's also common for customers' spouses to be enthusiastic about our products One time, the receptionist buzzed me and said, Mary Kay, there's a man on the line who is asking to speak to the real thing, if there is one. What does he want? I asked. He won't say. He just said he'll only talk to the real thing. I told her to put him on, and I had never heard a man talk so fast. I think he was afraid the real thing would hang up. He said, Mary Kay, I called to thank you for saving my marriage. Because I didn't know this man, I couldn't imagine how I might have saved his marriage. But before I could ask, he continued, 
My wife and I have been married for eight years. And when we first met, she looked something right out of the pages of Vogue magazine. She had every hair in place, a beautiful face, and a fabulous figure. Then she became pregnant and was sick for the entire nine months. She lost all interest in her appearance. We had a second child and the cycle repeated. He was talking so quickly that I didn't even have a chance to say a word. It got to a point, he continued, that when I left in the morning, she'd be standing there with one kid hanging onto her dirty house coat and the other kid screaming in her arms. She never combed her hair. She never made up her face. And when I'd come at home, home at night, the only thing that would have changed was that it was worse. About two months ago, she went to a Mary Kay skincare class and bought $28 worth of stuff. I could tell you that this amount sounded like a national debt to him. But he said, the woman who sold it to her really did a good job. My wife probably thought that I'd be mad at her for spending $28 on cosmetics. So when she got home, she fixed her face. And as soon as she saw the, as soon as she saw the improvement, she had to do her hair to get dressed. When I got home that night, she looked terrific. It had been so long since I had seen her look that way that I had forgotten how beautiful she really was. And the best part is that she now fixes her face and her hair and gets dressed every morning. Besides that, she's lost 12 pounds and I've gotten my old girl back. I've fallen in love with her all over again and it's all because of you. Then he hung up. Those were the last words. It's all because of you. I never got a chance to ask him who he was or which beauty consultant had done such a great job, but I went immediately into the unit meeting and told them what had happened. Then I said, how do you know that it wasn't you who performed this little miracle? I still tell that story because, well, few men would actually take the time to telephone. The same miracle has probably been repeated thousands of times. Often my own enthusiasm for Mary Kay products makes a sale when I least expect it. One interesting incident occurred in 1966 when my late husband Mel and I enjoyed a delayed honeymoon trip to Rome. We were sitting in an open-air restaurant near the Colosseum, one of those places where everyone sits side by side at long tables. Mel had just finished saying, I haven't seen any of those beautiful women Europe is famous for. Where are they? Just then, a gorgeous woman walked in, tall, thin, and stately. She had beautiful black hair and ivory complexion, and she was very well dressed. We both decided she must be an Italian countess. As luck would have it, the waiter seated her next to Mel and her husband next to me. A few minutes later, Mel took out a pack of cigarettes and the man asked if he might have one. He explained that he had been in Europe for six weeks and they hadn't been able to get any American cigarettes. Mel graciously gave him a pack and then the man said, thank you, I will treasure these. They began talking and the man asked Mel what business he was in. Mel told him, I'm in a gift business and my wife is in the cosmetics business. The woman immediately became very interested. Cosmetics, she asked, what kind? Mary Kay Cosmetics, I answered. You have probably never heard of us. We're a small company in Texas, just a little more than two years old. Then before I knew it, I was enthusiastically telling her about our products. The purse I was carrying that evening was so small that it wouldn't even hold a lip and eye palette, so I had nothing to show her. But by the time we had finished dinner, she was writing a check for one of everything on our line. She explained that she would be back home in Acapulco in three months and asked if I would have the items sent to her by then. My enthusiasm about our product had excited her so much that she wanted to try them sight unseen. After receiving the product, she became even more excited. She kept sending in orders for three, six, complete collections every month or so. I was amazed because the import duty into Mexico is almost 100%. 
So a collection was costing twice the United States sales price. Unable to contain my curiosity, I wrote and asked what in the world she was doing with all the cosmetics she was ordering. She explained that because she looked so radiant, her friends constantly asked what she was using. Her response was to give them facials and present the product as a gift. Enthusiasm does spread like that. We've had an expression at Mary Kay, the speed of the leader is the speed of the gang. Just as a consultant or satisfied customers can generate enthusiasm in someone, a single person can also generate enthusiasm in an entire group. The best way to do this is by example. If a director of is enthusiastic, the consultant in her unit will be enthusiastic. And I believe that our directors set a wonderful example for their consultants to follow. And my feeling that it's my feeling that each of them is Mary Kay to her people. And they are in turn Mary Kay to the customers. I am thankful that I have been blessed with natural enthusiasm because I'm certain that this quality is responsible for my high energy level. Even after all these years in business, no matter how exhausted I may be the night before, I awaken each morning with renewed enthusiasm. I love what I do and each day presents new opportunities to love and encourage each working woman to success. I like what Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Just think, he didn't even know about Mary Kay enthusiasm. <laughs>